Hedda Hopper could make and break Hollywood careers. Her victims and friends list the movie world's most celebrated names. Cary Grant, Randolph Scott, Stuart Granger, Lucille Ball, Bob Hope, Debbie Reynolds, Gloria Swanson, it goes on and on. One name has however faded almost entirely away. This forgotten star at his height was earning $2,000 a week, had homes in the hills and was lauded by all who witnessed his powerful presence. He was signed by all the studios that still exist today, but then quite unexpectedly he gave it all up. No one actually knows why he so easily gave up that which many of us crave, power, wealth, fame, and all the trappings that go with celebrity, privilege and wealth were swapped in a heartbeat for a life in the deserts of Nevada with the Native American Paiute tribe. He was doing a brando way before it became fashionable. Hedda Hopper features prominently in the story of Gareth Hughes. She of course was famous for her hats and her lauded celebrity gossip columns. She first met Gareth when they were young actors in 1919 and starred together in the film Isle of Conquest. They remained firm friends and she was always ever careful to keep in touch with him. In fact, in December 1963, in one of her final columns, she devoted its entire contents to Gareth and what he had done in turning his back on Hollywood in search of something better. One time star devoted years as missionary to Indians by me, Hedda Hopper. As Christmas approached, I turned my back upon Hollywood and drove out to the motion picture country home in search of a story of peace and goodwill and found one in my old friend, Gareth Hughes. Nearly 30 years ago, Gareth was a highly acclaimed actor of both stage and screen. He had known wealth and fame. Brother David removed his false teeth to portray the witches and put on a sheet for the ghost of Banquo. Macbeth taught, thou shalt not covet. Do you regret anything, I asked. He thought long upon that. Absolutely nothing, he said. I might regret not having turned missionary earlier, but how could I have understood the frailty of man if I had not first found the frailty in myself?